all of you guys in stick cam, but I'd be watching Gary on blog TV, but there'd only be like three of us talking. So I didn't have to deal with this accidentally reading some blue script that calls me a name. Like, I didn't have to deal with the chat matter. I just dealt with Gary's voice and wherever Gary pointed his viewer. So it was like more from Gary's view. Uh, I like blog TV way over, ch over stick cam, 100%. Yeah, but like I said, it's, you're here, so that's good. So, you know, on blog TV, I would have never known. So, it's, you know, better to be... Only because you canceled out less. You canceled out early in the night, and you you went down, and nobody knew where you were, and, and we all cried. We all, like, actually, Jamie called your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's okay. Um, yeah, well, the blog TV's back up, but, you know, 15 people in there. Um, but whatever. I, I'm glad you showed up, so that's all I'll say to that. Uh, yeah, yeah I said it good enough. <laughs> the dentist I say, guy, but nuclear, nuclear Knight and I are, are used to not being considered girls. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think exactly used to it is the right word. But anyway. <sighs> Sorry, what did you say, Gary? Uh, you were supposed to be making some videos. I remember you saying last month, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be making a video. Uh, yeah, I'll make a video. And you never make a video. Well, you know, I, I like to make videos where I disagree with somebody, but uh, I've, nothing really controversial has come up. <sighs> Jeez. That's it. They all give the same excuse. Oh, everything's just fine. The world's not coming to an end. Yeah, it's not a big crisis. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I won't make a video. That's just it. You can say it in, in a sentence. You gotta have something to go with, you know. I, I got some things I've been writing down uh, that I'll talk about. And I, I know I said that last time. The one thing I w I'm gonna uh, throw this back at you is um, when are you gonna start writing stuff down, like that uh, cover page on the Do Not God channel that ends with To Be Continued? Yeah, well, that's the winter project. Like I said, I got the, I'm working on the book, working on the book. So now I've, I made the pointless promise, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just be like when I quit smoking cigarettes. Look, I quit smoking cigarettes. <laughs> that didn't work too long. Uh, we'll see. No, I mean, the plan is to write more stuff. So, maybe we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think a book would be a good compliment. It could really uh, be the breakthrough because then people can point to the rule and they won't. You, you can get past the pointless, stupid repetitive arguments where people just don't even understand where the be where the first premise is never mind step one step two step three conclusion because they can just go read the fucking book or because it, it's hard to get somebody to watch 10 minutes worth of video they, they usually watch one minute or two minute and then they form their own opinion and it's it's, uh, it's over for them yeah well, it's a weird world so i mean everything you got to throw at them is it's worth having whatever tools are available and take advantage of them. So I agree with you. It's got to be more organized and pointed so that you can end all the, you know, the, the pointless recapping, the pointless going back to zero and explaining the first premise, like I said. Uh, you know, if you keep wasting so much time on that, you'll never, you'll never get to the 15th premise or whatever, the 35th, whatever the important ones are. Well, wh where I think the important one is right now in your video, the one I watched today, is um, getting to this idea of change and affecting it and saying, you know, everything's crap, I want to blow the world up, but then it's saying, I can't blow the world up, so I'm going to try and play this game, even though I hate it, and try to change it. Um, where is the motivation for that? Well, like I say, what else is there? <clears throat> I mean, you take what you can get. I mean, you know, um, I mean, even though I was arguing it's all or nothing in terms of the how I look at my own existence and my own accomplishment, it's not all or nothing when it comes to fixing the mess we're in. So, I mean, if you can get the cesspool half cessed, well, that's something. So, yeah, it's not really... It's not getting us out of the shit, but it's getting us out of as much... You know what I'm saying? Is Whatever suffering you can prevent is worth preventing. So I guess from that simple perspective, if you can prevent one little blob of suffering, it's one less blob of suffering. So that's the motivation, I guess. All right. 
But um, in the video, you're talking about uh, you know a sunny day, drinking a beer, and it seemed like you were describing some positive experiences. Yeah, well, life has those. I, you know, there's no doubt about it. There's positive. Ex I've had them. I've had some positive experiences. I mean, I'd say the summer day beer thing sort of has worn off with time. I mean, that one's, yeah, it's okay, but it's not, you know, this isn't anything to live for. This really doesn't make up for cholera or any, you know, this doesn't really even make up for a common cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to put a bunch of days in the sun drinking a beer and, you know, swine flu. You know, it doesn't even really, it doesn't even kick fly, swine flu's ass. So it's not enough. So that's sort of the point I was making is that, you know, we really are chasing the big cheese. It's We all have our big cheese that we're after. And the little cheese is nice. The little filler crap where we have these little moments of contentment and peace. A good movie, you know, some kind of thing. Yeah, that's nice. But it's not enough. And what really keeps us in the game is the big desire thing. Whatever it is, the big cheese that you're chasing, the desire thing, that's what keeps you in the game. And that's the one that's gonna. That's the one that kills you. I mean, kills your productivity in the sense that you spend more time without it than with it. You spend more time in desire than you spend happy or content or satisfied. That's true. But sometimes when we measure the uh, negativity of desire, it seems to be more negative when it's unfulfilled desire and it never gets fulfilled. But sometimes when it's fulfilled, then it really cancels it out, doesn't it? <clears throat> yeah, but it only cancels it out is an illusion in our perception. I mean, the desire is all that's canceling it out. The minute desire truly is gone, there won't be any canceling out. Because desire is the finger that's pushing the scales down. Desire is making this look worthwhile. Unsatisfied, unrealized desire. People are never look. I mean, look, I look at my parents. They're fucking almost 90 years old, you know, and they're still in the game. And you're saying, what the fuck are you assholes chasing now? You know, I went fishing today. Uh, I woke up and my head didn't fall off. I mean, you know, they're still in the game. Like, there's still something to accomplish. And it's just so lame. It's like, yeah, we're never done because we always have, like, it's always like one more day. And, oh, I might be able to do this or I might be able to do that. But it's, we're just, it's, but like I said, if the desire's gone, you're done. Desire is the only thing that keeps you in the game. Yeah, it's true. I'm just trying to, um, kind of pick apart the psychology here because, you know, I was watching that show, The Rich and, The Fabulous Life of the Rich and Famous, and it showed these people in the Hamptons with the $50 million home and an indoor bowling alley and an indoor pool and an indoor movie theater. I'm thinking, I got all that shit within a 10 minute walking distance of my house and I pay 300 bucks a month rent I can go bowling anytime I want who the fuck cares why would I pay that kind of money for that shit and that's and that's an example of people playing the game to the to the most retarded extreme but then if you think of desire to say read war and peace from cover to cover you get through it and you accomplish that you haven't really lost anything you've actually really added something so I think there's distinctions here between these desires and fulfillment yeah, but like I said, it's still, it, you know, I mean, you're making distinctions, but it's still like, it's like when I think of these, some crappy books I read, the only reason, the only thing I liked about the book is it had some great sex scene in it or something. I mean, it's still cotton candy. It's still, you know, I mean, we can talk about like, oh, well, it's like it's Shakespeare or something, or like it's something magnificent accomplishment, and it's, but it's, it's not. I mean, it's all basically pretty fucking crude and superficial most desire is is pretty crude I mean why do you even have a bowling alley because you want to compete against somebody and beat them at bowling you know what I mean or you want to you want to bowl your best score ever you know because you're going to be unsatisfied ah, my best score is only a 174 or something and I have to bowl at 200 or something or 300 or whatever you're after you're just goddamn ch <coughs> chasing some sort of arbitrary bullshit accomplishment that's only going to mean something inside your fucking head. It doesn't mean anything.